Go ahead and tell it off that's not gonna help. How's everybody feeling today? Yeah. 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 Section one, you guys all right? Yeah. Yes. Section eight, you, everybody? <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not gonna start no trouble because I know I've seen Los Angeles. This is still LA to me. I just flew in here from Cleveland, man. It's different out here. I watch the movies. Everything I learned about California, I learned from rap music. So I know it's dangerous. <laughs> I'm serious. I know it's dangerous here because you got to understand where we're at. I just flew in from Obama, saw Mississippi. After I left Cleveland, we did a show out there. Some places don't need TSA. You know what I mean. I'm serious. Like Mississippi, South Dakota, Idaho. Alaska, places that the terrorists would never go. You know what I mean? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I was in the, this airport is small. It was so small. I have never seen them like it was like a high school gym duct tape to a lunchroom. It was so <laughs> small. I couldn't believe it. It was only three people in the airport. This was the weirdest thing I've ever heard. The pilot was on a first name basis with the TSA man. That was extremely weird for me because I'm used to the metropolis cities. This is where it gets crazy, because the TSA like to show authority, especially in those little bitty airports. I'm telling you the truth. Watch what I say. Go to a little place that nobody flies. Just watch. Like Hawthorne Airport or someplace real small. Watch how that is. It's a little trip, man. Miss it. Come through here. Take off your shoes. I said, well, not knee socks, or I'm not it. That will embarrass me in front of all three of these people. He said, take off. I can't take my socks off, man. These are my good shoes. He said, look here, buddy. If you want to fly, if you want to get on this plane, we're going to take your shoes off. You're holding up the people. I said, sir, we're going to have to try another way. He said, tell you what, put your bag on the conveyor belt, and we're going to start there. I said, man, this is some, man, I, I'm just ready to go. I got my snacks in my book bag. I got my little juice, so I'm going to be okay as soon as I get through. Guess what happened? As soon as my bag went through, the Bombay alarm went off. They had SWAT man, it wasn't a SWAT team, just one of them. They had police dogs, bomb devices, and I said, well, what is going on here? They said, well, calm down, man. We're going through, we're going to have to uh, look through your bag. I said, well, go ahead, look through. They was gang raping my carry-on luggage. It was insane, because I did not like this. They was looking all through my stuff. And then they took out one of my things that I had for an emergency. It was my little juice. He said, well, what the hell is this? I said, well, sir, calm down. But that's just my uh, high ski, uh, high ski uh, juice. You know, it, 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 it was just a juice. I, I, I drink that. I'm thirsty. He said, God, not anymore. It's not. It belongs to us. I said, well, why are you going to take it, sir? He said, because it's not 3.2 ounces. <laughs> this is true. He measured it. I said, well, sir, actually, that's less than 3.2 ounces. It was spilling over my paper, so I put it in that little container to kind of save my, my papers. and my, my, I didn't want it to leak. He said, well, Dad, dude, put your, shut up. Don't tell me how to do my job. I said, well, sir, I won't say anything. He said, come back through. This is where it gets real strange. I walked back through the conveyor belt line, and a damn alarm went off. Boo! Woo! He said, stop right there. Take those shoes off. I said, sir, look, you can see the metal contingents on my shoes. That's all it is. He said, take them off and come back through. All right, I take my shoes off. Oh, sir, you gonna dig this? This is that machine that's racist against me. <laughs> you can get away with not nice little linen. He said, "What's going on?" I said, "Sir, you see, I have zippers on my shirt." He said, "Well, take it off, damn it!" I had to take my shirt off. Now I'm coming back through, and I am extremely nervous because I'm seeing the three ladies look at me in the back. They say, "Hurry up!" As soon as I walk through, oh, sir, what's going on here? He said, take it off. I said, so you can see I have zippers on my pants. He said, I don't give a damn what it is. Take them off. I said, well, sir, right here? He said, right here, right now. I said, okay. I still got my t-shirt. I still got my underwear and my socks. Come back through. Sir, what's going on? You can see I have uh, gold trinkets all in my socks. He said, take them off. <laughs> okay, sir. He said, let's try it again. Please, Jesus, let me get through. And I'm not talking about the Mexican guy who lives in Claremont. <laughs> <laughs> I go back through. Oh, sir, you can see, look at my tank top. He said, take it off. Now I'm in my underwear, man. I'm telling you. I get nervous because the good looking girl that's behind me, she didn't even care about her flight no more. She was just looking. <laughs> you was 
I feel good. I'm at the hospital, but this time was not the place. Staring at me, man. So now I come back through. Oh, sir, what's going on here? They said, stop it. Take off the tank top. Now I'm in my underwear. I'm extremely nervous. I am nervous that I have nothing else but my underwear. But damn it, I'm from Cleveland. I'm going through. Sir, I'm not doing, he said, take them off. I said, so I'm not taking my underwear off in this airport, gym, uh, slash community center. He said, look, you can't go. I said, I'm not taking my underwear off. He said, well, stay right there, Dad. We want to send a special agent over here to inspect. And guess what? They sent a, uh, was a California agent. He was a um, homosexual to do a seven-minute visual inspection. I couldn't believe it at first. That dude looked at me. He did a seven-minute inspection. He said, let me see. Shoes off, shirt off. Um, pants all uh, um, So I'm gonna need to look in your underwear. I said, for what? He said, for bombs. So I don't have no bombs, so I need to see if you wanna fly. He looked through my underwear, and I'm telling you, it's the most uncomfortable thing because he was looking happy at first, and then he just got an attitude. Oh my God, send him through. This boss said, wait a minute, I heard a bomb needs to check on the bomb. He said, honey, if it's a bomb that small, it won't go off. Check me again. Check me again. He didn't look right, sir. I'm telling you. Real quick, the last thing I say before I get off, uh, Claire, my love, you're like, who did God put here to bring life into the world? Men or women? That's a good guess. It's actually men. That's why God made Adam first, and women come from men. Everything starts with an Adam, A T O M, and it grows from there. Air, fire, fuel, water, Adam. That's why women have one more rib than a man. That's why I think under the Trump administration, every time a woman gets an attitude or kicks you out the house with some girl you allegedly had sex with in her bed while she was at work that day, working overtime on, <laughs> the point is, we should be able to legally take our rib back if they get mad. And I tell you, 30 days at the law board effect, you're going to see a bunch of crumpled over ladies walking down First Street. Uh-uh, girl. He's going to left my rib. He on that bullshit. <laughs> I'm glad I'm telling you, man. You'll see some women with 50 kids by 40 different men. They won't have no ribs left. <laughs> Look like a backwards crab walking to the bus. Like, girl, at least my neck muscles work. I can do this. But it's good that that law is not passed because you know what? You get a lot of people who like to abuse the law. And a lot of, I got cousins. They're like men would like to take advantage of good situations. I got a cousin. He don't have no job, no money, no furniture. He'd just have an apartment full of ribs stacked up in his living room. He's he the type of person that they two fat girls trying to make a queen size bed. Still, can't do that, man. I liked it, that girl. Hey, we got a whole good show coming up for y'all, man. I'm Steve Turner. Have a good show.